assault weapons now. Ban them now. Once and for all. I led the fight to do that in 1994. In, in 10 years, that ban was law. Mass shootings went down. After we let it expire in the Republican administration, mass shootings tripled. Let's finish the job and ban these assault weapons. President Biden calling for Congress to ban assault weapons in the United States during this week's State of the Union address. Fred Guttenberg joins us now. His 14-year-old daughter, Jamie, was murdered in the hallways of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in the 2018 mass shooting in Parkland, Florida. Next week marks five years since the shooting that claimed the lives of 17 people. And Fred continues his tireless work to try and keep other families from having to go through this nightmare. Fred, thanks for coming back on. How are you holding up? Five years, but it still feels like five minutes. You know, I was just sitting here, um, we were talking at the table about how five years ago today, Jamie yeah. was still alive. And, and Mika, the way my day started when Jamie was still alive was with me getting up before anyone else in my house. I've always been an early riser. But when Jamie woke up in the morning, the first things out of her mouth every morning, because watching Morning Joe for me was ritual, her day always started by saying, Dad, she'd yell down the stairs, are you watching Morning Joe? <laughs> and five years ago today, I still heard that voice every day until February 14, 2018. Because of what happened to my family, I now spend my life dealing with gun violence, supporting families affected by gun violence, because I never want to have to meet another dad who loses that voice, who stops hearing yeah. their kid, who can't find new pictures and share new memories. Um, it ain't been easy. But no. we push forward. Well, it hasn't been easy as an understatement because we're still dealing with mass shootings on a weekly, daily basis. Yep. And while there have been some steps taken, um, it, it just seems like we're getting farther and farther away from the goal. Um, are you still hopeful? that I, we can have decent gun reform and measures that will make our children safe in schools. Well, I am. Um, you know, listen, we passed big legislation earlier this year, and it's going to take a while to bend the curve on gun violence. That legislation is really just starting to take effect. We now have an ATF director who, even though legislatively is challenged, he is doing everything that he can. But here's why I am hopeful. Um, in the past three elections, we have elected more and more and more people who want to reduce gun violence. And in spite of the loony bin that we currently have in the United States House, um, I believe that's a two-year phenomenon. It'll be gone. Um, we will still get more legislation done. When Jamie was killed five years ago, we had 300 million weapons on the streets of America. We now have over 400 million plus ghost guns. That is a relic of, of COVID and the former guy's decision to make gun shops essential businesses. And we're gonna have to deal with it. But I do know with certainty, there are so many common sense things that we can do to reduce gun violence, whether it's extending the background checks, doing things with ammunition, banning the assault weapons like the president called for. These are possibilities we were just talking about it before at the table, that over 80% of America, <laughs> excuse me, that over 80% of America wants done, and I think we're gonna get it done. Fred, good morning, it's Willie. It's always so good to see you. Heartbreaking, but also beautiful to listen to you talk about Jamie every time, and we're so happy you're a part of our family now. Thank um, you. I, I wanna ask you about the generational change that we may be seeing, because the people who make the laws right now didn't live through school shootings. I was a little bit too old to have to worry about that. I didn't do lockdown drills the way my kids do routinely and don't have a second thought about it. I didn't turn on the TV a couple times a week and see another mass shooting the way we do now. Are you hopeful 
that maybe a new generation of leadership, some of these activists that we've seen since Parkland, since Sandy Hook, may actually rise up and change the way we think and talk about guns in this country? Heck yeah. I mean, listen, in Florida alone, where the election was a disaster, we did elect, elect Maxwell Frost and Jared Moskowitz. Uh, and Jared personally was very affected by Parkland. He was a part of our community. He is the reason gun safety got passed in Florida. And Maxwell is a tremendously awesome kid who is going to do great things. But even friend of the show, Dan Goldman out of New York, gun safety champions who are going to push to do more. We have a lot of work to do, but they get it. And we're going to elect more people like them. You know, uh, listen. And anyone on the Republican side who does not want to reflect the will of the American people and who doesn't want to take on their party, who seems to have accepted that it's okay to have gun violence, that it's okay to raise a generation of kids who grow up expecting gun violence. That's, I mean, it's a sick thought, but that's where we are with our kids today. We're going to fire them because they are putting our children at risk and we don't have to be okay with that. Hey, Fred, five years goes by like that. Uh, five yeah. years. Uh, Jamie would probably be getting ready to do second semester at some college, probably a great college. Today. Probably University of Florida. She was going to be a gator. Okay, she'd be a gator. Uh, her shouting down the stairs to you every morning, hey, Dad, are you up? What are you doing? That voice... Talk about that voice that I know you still hear and how that voice and the fact that she forfeited her future to political cowardice because of political cowardice. Yeah. How does she keep pushing you forward? Jamie was a lot of things. She was the toughest person I'll ever know, which as her dad was was amazing and also sometimes challenging, but I miss it like you have no idea, but she was tough. But Jamie also was someone who fought for others, who always wanted to do good for others. She volunteered her time for kids with special needs. She hated bullies and she would challenge bullies, even though she was a petite little thing. And you know, her voice is now what pushes my wife and I forward um, to do the things we do, whether it's the political work. Um, you know, Jamie was obsessed with her dogs. So through our foundation, we've just started this Pause of Love initiative where we are providing companion dogs to families across the country affected by gun violence, plus the entire first year, whether it's food, grooming, veterinary training, because it's what Jamie would have wanted us to do. And it's how we can honor Jamie's memory. So we're gonna do a lot of things because Jamie's voice will live in my head forever. I'll keep working to stop the next one, but I also know there's another one around the corner and we will be there for that family when it happens. You know, I really admire how you've turned your grief into a superpower and you're doing this work and you're going out there and you're making a difference for other people who maybe haven't had the courage or the ability or the resources. And that's really admirable. Thank you. And so you are here today in New York because you're doing something at the UN, fighting anti-Semitism. Can you talk about that? So I was there yesterday, uh, a tremendous event um, hosted by the uh, second gentleman, Doug Amhoff, um, and my uh, good friend, Ted Deutsch, um, put together uh, by Andrew Weinstein who's uh, currently serving at the UN. Uh, Anti-Semitism is on the rise throughout the world. It's on the rise right here in the United States of America, driven by a lot of evil forces. And by the way, a lot of the same forces that are pushing gun violence across our country. Um, and they utilize a lot of the same methods to organize some of these um, different uh, 4chan and other places that evil exists. And anti-Semitism was on, uh, you know, uh, the, it was, they were taking it on yesterday at the United Nations um, and ways, the importance of dealing with it, because it's not just a threat to Jewish people, it's a threat to democracy. And it was a really important conference. Um, I'm glad I was invited to be a part of it. Uh, I, I do, as, a, as an American and an American Jew, I fear the connection between anti-Semitism 
and guns in America, because that is why in our country, you will see certain types of targeted hate violence. And so I was really glad that at the United Nations yesterday, you saw it being taken on. And we as a country, we've got to do better at it. Fred Gottenberg, uh, it's always good to see you. Thank you so much for coming on this morning. Um, and we should let our viewers know that Fred has a new book coming out later this year entitled American Carnage, Shattering the Myths That Fuel Gun Violence. Um, and Fred, thank you for staying thank with you. us. Um, we appreciate you.